Shalom. Giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, pushing his doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel, who were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right, I wanted to do a uh, land back on a lesson by this beloved brother here of uh, GMS, who goes by the handle Biblical Defenders. I actually do a lot of uh, lessons responding to uh, his videos. Um, as you can see, the title here is Christians are Easy Work. So we're going to play a quick clip by this Bible thumping Christian who is 100% ignorant of biblical scripture and the true narrative of the Bible. And let's face it, all Christians are ignorant of the true narrative of the Bible. If they weren't, they wouldn't be calling themselves Christians. They don't even understand what the nature of the word or the actual meaning of the word Christian is. Okay, but without any further ado, let's go ahead and uh, play this video. Black Hebrew Israelites will tell you that only black Hebrews will be in heaven. This is obviously a lie and it's not biblical at all. All right. First off, and this is more proof that these these jackasses, these demons are always trying to demonize us because we don't run around talking about calling ourselves black Hebrew Israelites. Right. Because first and foremost, we're not black. OK, he's clearly not black. His facial hair is. This part of his hair, not the dyed blonde parts, this demon, this feminine freak. Okay, this part of his hair is black. This is black. But what color is his skin? His skin is, is brown. It's a caramel color, right? So that shows you that, you know, these, these devils use the color psychology to de demonize us and worship and elevate themselves with white and they demonize us with the, the term black. At any rate, the Israelites are going to come looking like all nations because we're scattered into all nations. And we'll get that. In fact, when you go to John 3.16, you said, see where it says that God loves the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the world. Not just simply black Hebrew Israelites, which they're fake anyways. But you even go to the book of Revelation, chapter 7. I want you to listen to this and what it says. All right? It says this, Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation, tribe, and people and language standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. So you see in heaven... There's people of every nation, every nation that have accepted Jesus Christ, every nationality, every skin color, every tongue, every, every culture that has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, repented, they're in heaven. This is why you can't trust what the black Hebrew Israelites say. They stand on the corner, they yell, they scream, they sweat too much. Okay, that's that. So he said a mouthful of nothing, okay? He can't substantiate anything he's saying with scripture. See, the problem with Christians is, is that number one, they're not endowed with the spirit of understanding, the Holy Spirit. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, in order to understand the narrative of the Bible, okay, in its entirety, you have to have the Holy Spirit given to you, all right? Now, I'm not just making this up. This is in the scriptures, right? At any rate, so what Christians do because they don't have the Holy Spirit is they take everything at face value, okay? Now, let's go, let's tackle some of the, what we'll do John 3.16, but we'll start with Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 because to the average person, this means exactly what it says, but no, it's a hidden, hidden meaning in all of this. 
Okay, meaning that you have to look up the words. You can't take them at face value because um, from outward appearances, it means exactly what he said it does. But it clearly doesn't when you look up these words and the meanings of them. All right. So Revelation chapter seven, verse nine, a multitude. Remember that word multitude from the tribulation. OK, this is an end time prophecy, obviously. Right. This is knocking on the doors of redemption. All right. Well, the book of uh, uh, Revelation is in and of itself. Right. But then after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds. Pay attention to that word kindred. You got to look that up and you got to look up this word, all nations and people and tongues and stood before the throne and before the lamb who's Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. All right. So we have to look up these words, like I mentioned, okay? Because you can't take them at face value. Of course, this looks like and sounds like all nations and all kindreds, but you got to delve a little deeper, right? So let's start with the word kindred. Because this is an open and shut case, but see these lazy ass Christians refuse to go into the Bible and look up anything. All right. They have a narrative that they have to stick to no matter what. And this is why uh, they can't just go into words and, and figure things out based on that. Because even if they did, they would still cling to that ridiculous narrative of Christianity. Most of them, not all. Because some of us were called out of that darkness and into this truth, into the light. All right. So the word for kindred is fule. It's pronounced fule. It sounds like it would be file, but it's pronounced fule. Let's listen to it. Strong's G 5443. Fule. Fule. Okay. This is a Greek word. We know the New Testament was translated into Greek. A tribe. What else does it mean? This is the true definition, right? In this context, in the context of Revelation chapter twelve, uh, chapter seven, in the New Testament, that's what NT stands for. All the persons descending from one of the twelve sons of the patriarch Jacob, right? That's what that means in this context. Why? So why would it be? talking about the, the Israelites, because that's what this is describing, right? Well, because the Israelites were scattered into all nations. Well, let's get that. That was a prophecy, okay? That was obviously fulfilled. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. The scatter means to send you into all nations as a curse, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, like Jesus Christ, okay? Buddha, Allah, Hare Krishna, okay? They're all gods, all idols, okay? Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Our forefathers never called on a man called Jesus Christ. He was a Hebrew. He had a Paleo-Hebrew name, okay, that literally means he delivers, Yehowashai, okay? Now, it says, and among these nations thou shalt find no ease. So we're going to be dwelling in these nations, right? Let's get another example of us being scattered into all nations. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, and we're going to start at verse Five, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Did you get that? Okay. So who are these, these Israelites being gathered out of all nations like this Christian uh, Fembot said? Right? He said these are all heathens or non-Israelites. No. Out of all nations or every nation under heaven, there would be Israelites dwelling in every nation under heaven. Why? Because we just read it. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, 
verse 64 said we'd be scattered into all nations this is this is a um, a prophecy that was fulfilled okay and it would continue to be fulfilled right century after century after century after century right this is a couple thousand years or a few thousand years after the prophecy of Deuteronomy chapter 28 see you have to be able to account for those those uh, Israelites that would be that were prophesied to be scattered into all nations okay you can't just say okay well that's the book of Deuteronomy it's over we'll move on to the next book well yeah what happened you know what's 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 with the the scattering of the Israelites what's to become of those scattered Israelites there's a story attached to this scattering okay it doesn't just stop with the end of of uh, Deuteronomy okay there's a story okay and it builds it culminates into the book of Revelation it tells you what's going to happen to those scattered Israelites that return to the Lord right it's a beautiful story all right let's go to the book of um, let's go back to the book of Revelation here all right could we define kindred biblically right so let's define let's see So we define kindreds. So let's define of all nations. Because believe it or not, that doesn't mean exactly what it says at face value either. All right? Let's prove it. Study to show thyself approved. And I'm roughly paraphrasing. Okay, so it says of all nations, right? Ethnos. Ethnos, a multitude, whether of men or of beasts, associated or living together, right? Now, we weren't living together, but we are a multitude of people, right? A multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus, the human family, a tribe, a nation, people, a group, right? In the Old Testament, foreign nations not worshiping the true God, pagans, Gentiles, right? But it's not talking about that in this context, and I'll prove it, right? Now, let's go to the book of, uh, let's go back to the book of uh, Genesis. All right, this is the book of Genesis, chapter 35, verse 11. And Yahweh said unto him, I, have, I am Yahweh Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. Okay, let's put this in context. The Lord is talking to Jacob, okay, who told him that his name was going to be Israel, right? Because he was going to be the progenitor of 12 nations of people who must be accounted for, okay, especially in the book of Revelation, okay? Because those kindreds are all descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. We just read that, right? In the definition of kindred. Okay, so... The point is 3511. And Yahweh said unto him, I am Yahweh Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. Talking to Jacob, a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. Is this talking about all nations? No. These company of nations are talking about Israelites. Let's prove it. I mean, I don't have to because it's pretty obvious as to what it means. All right. And a company of nations. Kahel. Let's look that up. Assembly. Company. Congregation. But this is the point. A company of returning exiles. Wait a minute. Stop the presses. Now, Call her Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. This is the first time I've ever read this, this definition. Okay, this morning. Um, doing a little research for this lesson and pre preparation for this lesson. Okay, but this, a company, a company of nations of returning exiles. So these nations, all nations that's talked about in the book of Revelations that we just read, is this company of nations. Right. Or of this company of returning exiles. 
To return to something means you were there once before. Well, non-Israelites or heathens were never a part of the Heavenly Father's fold. Never. And they never will be. Okay? And the kingdom of heaven, right, they're going to be under the foot of the Hebrew Israelites. They'll never be on our level. They'll never be co-rulers, co-governors, right? Priests with the children of Israel, the sons of God. Okay, that's never going to happen. Okay, they will forever be in that subjective position. Okay, a subservient position. All right, I mean, they'll still be blessed because that would be better than, you know, dwelling in darkness and, and uh, uh, being subjugated to a, uh, a wicked uh, nation like Esau, Edom, because the tribes of the earth are mourning under Esau Edom's rulership okay and a lot of them don't even realize it all right but they're starting to they're starting to wake up and see just how wicked and evil these damn Edomites are all right but anyway again uh, the Hebrew word for a company of nations is kahel pronounced call hail right and again it describes a company of returning exiles and those exiles are Israelites we were exiled because we were cursed. We were scattered into all nations under heaven. Okay? So, again, that Christian is debunked. Okay? He doesn't understand the scriptures. And, again, he's taking things at face value, not knowing what it actually means. Okay? This is why you have to look up words. You have to. All right. You must. Otherwise, you are not going to understand anything in the Holy Scriptures. OK, so these all nations, a table, a company of nations. Right. Kahal. It means a company of returning exiles. Right. These kindreds, one of the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. And I'm roughly paraphrasing. OK, so that is who that multitude from the tribulation is going to be. Right? Didn't it say multitude? No, I think it said multitude in the other. Um, oh, right here. Yeah, multitude. Right? There we go. Company. Multitude. Company of returning exiles. <laughs> Ty Jackson, you don't understand the Bible, son. Sit your ass down somewhere. Let's go to the book of John. Okay? Because... So lucky. Let's start with uh, Matthew because we're going to then. Let's see. Did I pull up Matthew? I sure did. All right. Now, this is the Messiah himself talking. OK, because they quote John 316 for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Well, what does that mean? Well, first, you got to define the word world. OK. You know what? Let's let's do that first. Let's do that first. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Alright? So let's look up that word world because again, that's a word that you have to look up. Alright? You got to put it in its proper context. Alright? You can't just read it and say, oh, world. It means everybody in the world. No, it doesn't. Cosmos. Right? What does that mean? Because there's multiple definitions for the word cosmos. Shalakia, what the hell happened? Cosmos. Here we go. As you can see, cosmos. Strong's G, 2889, cosmos. All right. Cosmos. And a, an app and a harmonious arrangement or constitution and order right cosmos is a specific order government right didn't the scriptures say that yahweh shai when he returns he's going to be the governor well he is the governor right and under a governor okay what kind of uh what, what do you have to have in order to have a governor i mean what is he in charge of well he's establishing a government right government means to rule okay so who are going to be part of those who are going to be the rulers of that government right well Yahweh is the king under him King David 
and then the 144,000, right? So that's a harmonious arrangement or constitution, order, government, right? Now, of course, down here, it says the Gentiles as contrasted to the Jews. Well, that's out of context. And it's not talking about the Gentiles, the heathen, non-Israelites. This is referring to, okay, this particular definition here, this government, because that's what Yahweh is coming to establish once he returns, okay, and establishes the kingdom of heaven on this earth, right? So the word cosmos, as opposed to the word, let's see, Revelation 3, Right, Revelation 3, 10. Now, let's read the word world here in this context because it's a different context entirely than uh, for God so loved the world. And you'll see what I'm talking about. This is Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. Because thou, and this is the Messiah himself talking, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, the mark of the beast, which shall come upon all the world. Right now, we just read the word world in John 3 16. And what was the world in that context? Cosmos, an orderly arrangement or government. What is this talking about? Well, it ain't cosmos. Let's look that up. World. Oikamene. Oikamene. Strong's G, 3625, oikumene. 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 Right. So let's see what that means. Why is the, the Lord using two different contexts for the word world? Okay, well, because it's, it doesn't mean the same thing in both scriptures. The portion of the her earth inhabited by the Greeks. How about that? Right? In distinction from the lands of the barbarians. So in one context... It's just talking about the Greeks. What about number two definition? Roman, the Roman Empire, all the subjects of the empire. Whoa, that's a second definition. That means entirely different from this, this first definition. It means it's entirely different, Salakia. The definition number three in its proper context is what it's referring to. The whole inhabitant earth, the world. So Revelation 3 is talking about the entire world. So why wasn't Oikomene used in John 3.16? If it's talking about the whole inhabited earth, the whole world, the inhabitants of the earth, men, right? This is the, the definition or word that John chapter 3 verse 16 should be referencing, right? But it's not, okay? It is specifically referencing a specific orderly arrangement and that's the hundred and forty four thousand okay so that's the kingdom of heaven right and i hope you're following me here because it's it's as black and white as plain as day okay this is talking about the entire world now john chapter 4 verse 22 um the woman at the well right this is the messiah talking too Okay, and this is about the kingdom of heaven. How do we know? Well, let's let's put it in its proper context. The woman of Samaria, the woman of the well. Let's see. Let's start here at seven, chapter uh, verse for, uh, verse seven. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yahweh said unto her, "Give me drink. Give me to drink." Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? She was a heathen. She was not an Israelite. Right? And this is telling you. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Right? That's important to note. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of Yahweh, and who it is that seeth, that saith to thee, Give me to drink, Thou wouldest 
have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Are thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Yahweh answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This tells you he's talking about the kingdom of heaven. All right. Because that's the only way you're going to see everlasting life in this earth. And again, that's for the Israelites. To the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. And how was I said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. Well, stop right there. Why wouldn't the Lord, the Messiah, this woman is asking for everlasting life. Okay, she wants that spiritual water, that metaphorical water that he's talking about, right? That's what she wants. She's not, she's not wanting the, the, the physical water, right? But Shai denied her. This is why he said, go get your husband. Now, why would he say, go get your husband, when he clearly has this heathen woman asking him, hey, give me the gospel, give me the understanding so I can be eligible for everlasting life? No, he asked to see her husband because her husband was the Israelite, right? The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Yahweh said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yahweh said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. She slept with five men, right? And sex is marriage in the Bible, okay? So she's had sex with five men, and they were her husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, in that sayest thou truly, right? She's committing adultery. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Now, why wouldn't he just say, hey, you need to go repent, okay? Stop doing wickedness. Stop committing adultery and repent. Well, because repentance is not for the, he the heathens, right? And he's going to tell you that in a minute. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Now this is the point. Yahweh said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Right? That water, that everlasting life, right? That was going to be given to the Israelites was not extended to her, right? Salvation is not extended to the non Israelites. Salvation is of the Jews. Now, this may be a little confusing because it says our fathers worshiped in this mountain, right? But they weren't worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? And even if they were, okay, they weren't accepted into the congregation of the Lord because they're not Israelites, okay? And this is clearly an illustration of that, okay? Because Yahweh is saying, well, yeah, so what? Because you weren't worshiping the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You, didn't, you don't know what you're worshiping, right? Because if you knew what you were worshiping, you'd know that salvation is of the Jews. Okay, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers, okay, the elect of the nation of Israel shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. All right, Yahweh is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him. Not probably, not maybe but must worship him in spirit and in truth as Israelites, okay? Meaning you have to know the name of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten Son, first and foremost. And you have to adhere strictly to this doctrine, okay? 
All right, and I'm going to wrap it up with uh, the, the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 5. All right, now we just saw that Yahweh Shai spoke in the book of John, chapter 4, telling her that salvation was for the Jew, right? Why didn't he say, okay, for God so loved the world, he sent me, his only begotten son, to save the entire inhabitant world, or the word oikomene that we read, okay, in the Greek, right? In the blue letter. The 12 disciples, instructions for service. Instructions from who? Yahawashai. Let's start at verse 5. These 12, Yahawashai sent forth and commanded them, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, the Sumerian woman, and people like her, non-Israelites, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Why not? Because the gospel's not for them, right? Who are these prophets going to minister to? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Stop right there. If the kingdom of heaven is for all nations, why is he telling his disciples to only seek out the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, guess what? These lost sheep of the house of Israel are scattered into all nations under heaven. We read that, right? In the book of Acts, right? Let's go back to the book of Acts because we didn't... Um, let's see. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 5. Because I wanted to prove a point with this one and I didn't um, expound on the point. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And these are the righteous. These are the elect of the nation of Israel. Right? Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude, the multitude, didn't we read that before? Came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Right? And now hear we every man in our own tongue where we were born. And it gives you examples. Okay? If you don't believe that these Israelites were scattered out of every nation under heaven, these are the nations where we're going to be picked up from when the Messiah returns. Right? And these are just examples of it. Parthians and Medes and Elamites, right? And why aren't they being called Israelites? They're being called Parthians. They're being called Medes. They're being called Elamites. Why? Because they're dwelling in, in foreign lands, right? Let's see. And the dwellers right here, that's what I was looking for, and dwellers in Mesopotamia, right? There's the Israelites that are dwelling in Mesopotamia, dwelling in Parthians and Mede, and Elam, right, Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, and Phrygia, and Pamphylia, and Egypt, right, these people are being called Egyptians, they're being called Libyans, look, and, and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, and you think all these Israelites are going to look like black people, no, they're going to look like the people that they're dwelling with, right? We know what the Egyptians of today look like, right? Most of them aren't so-called black people, all right? The, the Egyptians, the true Egyptians are Hamites, and they're not Israelites. But we're going to have Israelites dwelling in Egypt, right? It says strangers of Rome. By the way, this is who the book of Romans was written to. These strangers, these Israelites, right? These devout men, right dwelling in every nation under heaven jews and proselytes cretes arabians why are israelites called arabians we just explained that we do hear them speak in our tongues in the wonderful works or tongues the wonderful works of yahweh okay i mean come on man this is so easy this is like black and white open and shut okay Let's read this again. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They're scattered into all nations under heaven, right? 
And as ye go, preach, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, the spiritually dead, right? Cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give, okay? Open and shut case, okay? So, Mr. Ty Jackson, Mr. Feminine Man, you don't know the, the Bible, you don't understand the scriptures, keep your trap shut, right? And repent, because if you don't, you are going to be destroyed. I 100% guarantee it, you demon. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahah Kudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders, the great millstone, pushing this doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel, who are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy. Till next time, Shalom.